Our next guest is an actor and activist and the only White House staffer to star in a Harold and Kumar movie. You can watch his new show, Cal Penn Approves This Message, Tuesdays on Freeform. Please welcome Cal Penn. Hi, Cal. Hey, man. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Good to see you. Where are you right now? Uh, I, so I'm in the studio that we shoot Cal Penn Approves This Message in. Uh, which is in a house in Toronto where I'm shooting another project. So it's a combination of COVID restrictions uh, and keeping everything safe that I'm doing. I assume what you're doing, which is it, like, there's, I just, it, there's. Is it legal to shoot a political show in Canada? Is that allowed? It is. We made sure that we did it in the right way, that okay. we're, we're, doing it, uh, we're doing it properly, <laughs> properly and safely. Did you watch the debate tonight? I, so I didn't. You um, didn't? I, which I, I assume might be surprising. I just didn't think it was... Um, I didn't think I was going to learn anything that would change my mind. You were right. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I, I sort of thought, like, why go through... Like, if I'm going to turn on the TV... I don't I don't watch much TV as it is, but, like, you know, if, if I've got 15 minutes and I'm scarfing down a sandwich, I'm going to turn on Golden Girls on Hulu because I know exactly what I'm going to get. <laughs> So you you prefer to watch the debate between Dorothy and Blanche than uh, Trump and yeah. Biden? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Any time spent with Betty White is not a bad uh, not a bad thing. Won't this leave you at a bit of a disadvantage hosting a political talk show? No. So our show doesn't respond to the twenty four hour news cycle. Okay. It's a six episode uh, mini series leading up to the election, geared towards young people, and each one is on a specific topic. So it doesn't matter what happened this week or in the last twenty four hours. For those who don't know, you did a very unusual thing. You went, you're a movie star, and you decided to take a job working uh, for the Obama administration in the White House. What years were you there? Oh, man. Uh, I started in June of 2009 until the end of 2011, pretty much, so just and over two years. How was that trans... What was that adjustment like, going from doing what you did to, to working in such a structured and important environment? So uh, two things I will say. One is it's not as crazy of a story as you think. There are plenty of people who don't do what we do for a living, but they take a leave of absence from their private sector career. So I worked with people who were pediatricians and had taken leaves of absence from law school or working in a factory. And some people do it for six months. Some people do it for a couple of years. It's like what's one of the amazing things about what it means to be American, right, that we can do this sort of a thing. The second thing I will tell you is everything in government is acronyms. So the real learning curve was I would get these emails that were like, you know, for example, the, the, the first word that, that's in, the, in a document you might get might be like, um, it, it'll spell out the name of an organization and then it'll just in parentheses, you'll see the acronym for the rest of the document. And I remember my first week, somebody forwarded me something about uh, a group in the Philippines called the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. And I'm reading this email, but the rest of the email is just, MILF is a group based in the Philippines. <laughs> MILF, some consider MILF to be dangerous. MILF recruits men. And I was like, this is amazing. I, so I'm like texting my friend who are on this email chain, and I was like, oh wait, don't do that. Uh, you have a serious <laughs> job, put on your serious face. Uh, that was the learning curve, I think, was just like keeping certain things to yourself. Yeah, is joking around discouraged? N not at the time, no. Look, I, I, what I liked about it was people had a people had a decent sense of humor, and you knew you knew when it was time to focus and when it was time to joke around. When you worked uh, for Obama, did you spend much time with Joe Biden? I know you met him. We have a, a photograph, I believe, of the two of you together. Did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, just, that was my idea. It's like uh, you, you got your shades on you because I do. Um, <laughs> no, I, I didn't spend uh, I didn't spend that much time with him. My job was mostly outreach to young people. Which, you know, I enjoyed, especially because it was uh, most young people agree on a lot of policy issues, unlike, I think, what you're seeing today, where there's a huge generational shift, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of them agree on science and climate change and that we should have health care policy and all that. So my job was a little a little different than some of the more vitriolic stuff. I think. Has uh, Biden seen Harold and Kumar? God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't discuss it with him? We didn't, we didn't discuss it. We didn't discuss it. But I would like to think he has. I don't know. <laughs> if Harold and Kumar fought Bill and Ted, who would win that, that fight? Oh, well, are, are Bill and Ted the same age they were in the movies, or are they however old they are now? I think you go same for us. the original movie. You know, there's a sequel now. So, yes, original, original ages. Yeah. 
original both. I think I take Ted, but <laughs> Bill takes John Cho's character. <laughs> so tell me about this show. What's the plan for the show, and uh, how long are you doing it? Yeah, so it's six episodes. Um, the idea for it was uh, myself and my writing partner, Raman Borsellino, sort of thought like, hey, we, we love shows like The Daily Show and Samantha Bee, but we don't love responding to the 24-hour news cycle. So what if you took that model of comedy forward, but then combined it with like a CBS Sunday morning where like every episode just makes you feel very good about the world? So it's, uh, it's a late night format. It's, it's monologue, field piece. And then that third segment is actionable items about whatever we're talking about. So our first episode was about the youth vote. Second episode is about education and technology. So it leaves and you, you had, with, hey, if you can't. You had Hillary Sorry. Clinton on tonight, right? We did. We had, we had uh, Secretary Clinton on tonight. Uh, all of our guests, it's interesting, the, the next two episodes, so tonight was Secretary Clinton. Next week is a, a law professor named Jonathan Adler, who's a very conservative member mm -hmm. of the Federalist Society. They advise the current president on his Supreme Court picks. And what we liked about these two guests was we, we want to offer young viewers an opportunity to access people with institutional memory. So there are plenty of great shows out there if you want an immediate reaction to policy and politics. But for us, it was like, if you're a first time voter, how do you consider the whole playing field before you know where to plug in? So uh, Secretary Clinton was amazing with her time. Uh, wow. Also a cool you know, from Bill Nye. Nice. Well, it's called, it's called Cal Penn Approves This Message, Tuesdays, 1030 on Freeform. And by the way, if I saw ramen borsalino on the menu, I would order it in an instant. It sounds delicious. We'll be right back. You know, you Thanks, Cal. We'll be right back with Heim. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings.